Welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at Jeff Okuda, cornerback from Ohio State. Fantastic cornerback from Ohio State. Uh, you know, there, there, there's been conversations that he may be the best cornerback that we've seen in the past five or six or so years. Hey, man, there's another video on that on my channel. You can go check that out to see my long form thoughts of that. I even take calls on the live stream, but uh, we're just going to talk about a little bit of film today, but, but he's fan. He take, he takes dudes out of plays, right? He totally erases people from plays. He has enough speed to run with guys. He has enough technique to properly mirror. Um, plus I think he has the confidence to put himself in good positions and he just ends up, you know, smoking people, right? Let me show you, uh, let me show you an example of that. So let's take a look at this play. Uh, Jeff Okuda is going to go in motion. Now, he's good enough to play inside and outside, and I'm saying that to let you know that he's going to be a cornerback that uh, if you put him over the best receiver and the receiver goes in motion, he's going to just travel with that receiver. Uh, so that'll that'll kind of give y'all some points, I guess, or give Jeff some points in y'all's hearts or whatnot. Let's just take a look at this play, then we're going to come back and talk about it a little bit. Got the interception on the back end of it. Fantastic. I think Jeff Okuda made this play because of his confidence in himself, right? Um in 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 his in his oily hips, confidence in his um, you know, change of direction, right? He's gonna super commit, right? Boom. He could just stay square and play both ways. That's what's so hard about playing about playing nickel corner that there's two way goes. He's not nickel corner right here, but <clears throat> uh I mean he was just he was just he was just following his receiver, and he ended up inside. But this receiver has a two-way go here. So Jeff Okuda is going to super commit to the inside because that's where he sees his receiver going. Now, this could be a double move. This could be a slant and go or something like that, a post corner. It could be anything. But Jeff has so much confidence in his ability to get back outside that he's going to bite down on that route to put himself in better position. And it worked out for him, right? If if a, if a receiver is going to be super speedy, quicky, releasey guy, right, he's going to win with separation. But there's no need for you to be super quicky, releasey, speedy guy if I'm jumping the route. If I'm jumping routes and getting ahead of you, then you're not separating with speed. <laughs> I'm right back on you in a hurry and i think this this only can exist this can only happen because jeff has enough confidence to where if it gets there and you break back outside he has the confidence to flip those hips and get back outside with you that's a fantastic play though did i mention jeff Okuda super physical and he punched the hell out of people at the line of scrimmage <laughs> Did I tell you that? So, hey, man, look, if 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 you're able to cover on two way outs, you're able to cover um, bigger receivers because you you have some great size. You as well. Combine nerds, please, if you don't mind in the in the comment section, tell us how big Jeff Okuda is. Um, if you're big enough to play with those guys, but then you're physical on top of that. You're physical. and You could just run with anybody. I think he can run with anybody. Maybe not everybody, but he can run with anybody. And. Hey, if he want to use a little bit of a little bit of physicality at the top of his routes, fine. And the downside to punching the hell out of people at the line of scrimmage is that he could put you in bad position if you don't flip and bail quick enough. Well, we know Jeff Okuda got the hips to flip and bail quick enough. So it's it's interesting, man. It's interesting the combination of traits and techniques used by Jeff Okuda. But he's the best. One of the best that we've seen do it. Let me clean that up real quick because y'all will use that against me. He's one of the best that we've seen do it. Check out your boy here. He's lined up over the third receiver. Let's just take a look at this play, and then we're going to continue watching. Even if you do find a way to separate from him, get any separation from him. And to be fair, this could be like some kind of some kind of pick, some kind of rub or whatever. Even if you find ways to you know get him off you a little bit, he can recover. And I hope that your contested catch rating is pretty high because he's going to not quit on getting the ball out from you. <laughs> right? Uh, this is uh this was in the championship game, Clemson or whatever, or the semifinal game. Uh, if, if, even if you get the ball on you a little bit, he's going to fight. He's going to claw. He's going to pull down on your hands and he's just going to continue. And that also helps with his length as well. Um, you can catch the ball away from your body. He's going to use a little bit of his length to fight that ball out after you catch it. But Hey man, good luck to you. Pre catch, post catch, however you trying to beat Jeff Okuda, he has he has tools to beat you back. 
I think something important when we talk about these DBs is tackling now. And there were a couple people in one of my chat boxes, you know, while I was doing a live show, they were saying, well, Vach, they play cornerback. How important is tackling to a corner, right? As long as they can cover Deion Sanders. Well, this ain't Deion Sanders day no more. This is 2020 football. And a lot of teams are running quick game things. They're running outside zone things. They're running a lot more jet sweeps and stuff like that. So your cornerback can be in a situation where he has to tackle. And um, one thing about just, Jeff Okuda, let me run this. Uh, Jeff Okuda can tackle. He's a very willing tackler. He's a tough guy. He, you know what I'm saying, really gets his nose in there. Now, let me pause while I say this. He ain't like the best tackler in the world. He ain't like uh, Jalen Ramsey coming out tackling because Jalen Ramsey was like a damn strong safety coming out tackling people, right? He ain't like that. Uh, But what Jeff Okuda is at the bottom of your screen here, what Jeff Okuda is, he's a very willing tackler. Um... And I would say that that he was coached to kind of just always put his nose in the fight, you know, whether, you know, whether he's great at it, whether he's a um, a full blown wrap up, drive your feet guy or or a big hitter guy. He's not those things necessarily, um, but he's 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 going to be in the mix. And, you know, man, if you want those teams look to where your other guys kind of get hands on him, Jeff Okuda will come in and clean up, you know, he'll he'll kind of uh, he'll kind of do some work there. Um, to kind of help you out, let's see. If, let's uh, take a look at this from the cartel view. See if we get a a better look at Jeff Okuda coming down. Hey, <laughs> we gonna we gonna come in and slide and trip your boy up. Uh, I think some people are not willing tacklers, and other are just like bad tacklers. I don't think Jeff Okuda is. Uh, I don't think he has a problem with with willingness. Um, you know, he he's just not. You know. He's not no no super missile of a guy. I think that's appropriate that we say things like that because, you know, there are some cornerbacks that are missiles, um, that are missile type tacklers or whatever. But take a look at Jeff down bottom. Take a look at him here. He's just kind of going to get in the tackle and just do what he got to do. He's going to wrap those. Let's see if I can get y'all a better, a little better view here. He's just gonna wrap those legs up, do what he got to do. He's just gonna make the play effectively. You can't ask for ask for no more than that. You know, just uh, just another thing to look at. You know, just to add on to the Jeff Okuda conversation when we're having it. I think his best trait is man coverage. Uh, you know, like we we've shown him shadowing, mirroring people, whatever. It's 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 pretty unfair. Um, so that'll cover your your uh, you know, cover zero, cover one teams. If you're a team that's aggressive, you like to blitz. We know that he can jam and um read the quarterback and uh play the flats. We know he can do that really well. That covers your cover two thing. But like I said, he can run. He can run, so he can do cover three things too, man. Uh, his. 40 number wasn't like a super Jalen Ramsey type number, but it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. Like, uh, I think the the best scheme for – well, the best player type for a cover three – well, that's man. But the best player type for, for a cover three is guys that can run a little bit and guys that are long. So you can use Jeff Okuda in any kind of defensive scheme you want to, man. Any kind of defensive scheme you want to, and he'll just smoke them. Uh, this is more so of a man coverage. He's just running – just hip to hip. Look at him. Look at him. Hit just you can't you just you try to get Jeff Okuda off of you. I dare you. I implore you. Try your best. Oh man. Jeff's just smoking the hell out of people. What's this play? And this was just unfortunate. <laughs> look, this was unfortunate for Nebraska right here, right? <laughs> look, this ain't had nothing to do with Jeff Okuda. He was just in the right place at the right time and he, he just Another highlight for Jeff Okuda, man. Just another highlight for him. Hey, it, 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 he he's he's fantastic, man. He's fantastic. Um, I know LSU wants to be DBU. <laughs> Boy, it's gonna be a good fight between y'all and Ohio State, man. Because Ohio State just keep putting guys out. There's even a guy on the other side of the field, Damon Arnett, that can play too. Probably won't be a a high, you know, a high pick like Jeff Okuda. You know, some people saying late first, I ain't, you know, whatever. You know, that's for y'all to discuss or whatnot. But Ohio State looking like they could be in the be in the uh DBU race too, man. So that's a that'll be a good conversation to have on uh one of these live streams one day. But boy, oh boy, Jeff Akut is just fantastic, man. He's top tier. Uh we've we've gone over his his traits, what he does well. I'm a fan, bro. I'm a fan. He's gonna be like a top six or so. I think uh, he goes no later than top six because if something happens with quarterbacks and um, then Chase, Isaiah could probably do something silly, maybe an offensive lineman. So I think he goes no later than seven. 
It shouldn't be that way, but, you know, in the NFL, you know, weird things happen every single draft. I ain't going to say what can't happen. But worst case scenario, this dude can't fall no later than seven. So I'm a big Jeff Kuda fan, and um, that's what we got for y'all today. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski, man. Until next time, peace, y'all. Thanks for watching. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.